Good evening folks and welcome to another Advent episode of Beer Rainy with Sean Connors. Basically we're at day 17. Behind every door is a German beer. I mean you can't go wrong with that. So we'll just jump right into it. Um, I don't know which beer I'm going to get today as every other day. Basically I know the beers that are in the box are labeled on the side. However I don't know which beer I'm getting which day. So today is day 17. 17 right down the bottom here. Punch it out, take out the beer, I'll let you see it before I, uh, I have a look, just so you know what I'm drinking, what I'm going to be drinking I should say. Alright, so I'll zoom in so you can read the can, and then I'll read the can, I'll do a little bit of research, try to find out a little bit about the style of beer, and we'll pour it up. Check out the aroma, check out the color, and then the big thing, check out the taste. And then I'll give it a rating out of five. And my rating, as per usual, a one is a drain pour. A two is, eh, not a fan, but I don't want to waste it, I'll finish it. A three is a good beer, a four is a very good beer, and a five is the best beer ever. So today we have Schwarz Tint Collab Stout. Wow, I've never heard of a German stout, so this is new to me. Um, 6.2% alcohol, so higher content than usual. Um, now on the box, they call this a dark bock. So, a little bit confused because on the box, or it's the same beer. The Schwarz Tint, and they call it a dark box or, or dark bock, and a bock is basically a stronger, which this is at 6.2, not a doppel bock, which would be even stronger. But they call it a dark bock, and the can says Collab Stout. So I'm a little bit confused about that. So I'm going to use my app, and my app is beer, or not my app, sorry, the beer, the app I've been using. It's beertasting.app. And basically, I take a picture of the can, it checks their database, and they give me a little bit of information. As well, every day on the app, they've been talking about the beer of the day from the Advent calendar. So there's two different things I can look at there. Alright. So I'll take a picture. I'm curious what the app is going to say with respect to the style of beer. Okay, so it's a bottom fermented, which makes it a lager. They beer style, they have dark bock. So I'm not sure where the stout thing comes from. Okay, they say Martin Sadile brewed his first stout in 1997 in a small brewery in Dietracting for the Kalila Beer Advent Calendar 2017, a larger amount of his Schwartz tint. Black, okay, tint is basically black ink, was brewed and met a large appeal outside the region of its origin. The barley is grown and harvested on its own farm. Since 2019, the black ink is brewed in cooperation with the brewery Hoffenkopf in the, in the brewery Buckberg and is therefore a unique cross border project in the in Salzach region. The roasted malt aroma spans from the fine cocoa notes to roasted coffee. So cocoa notes and roasted coffee, to me that says stout. The black ink is a perfect beer to go along with sweets and dessert. As truly, he, the brewery has truly created an award-winning and excellent delicacy. Hmm. Now I'm just going to check to see what they're saying. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. It says, although the beer has been around for more than 20 years, it's only named, it was only named in 2017 when Seidel became a brewery of the, they, they give a name there, I'm not even going to try, try to pronounce it. They say the name came to mind spontaneously. When I cleaned the pipes after brewing, I thought it looked like black ink. It is sold throughout the German-speaking area. No matter where I go to Hamburg or Switzerland, it is sold everywhere. The beer has been made... To is even made to the USA. On the one hand with the Advent Calendar and on the other hand Martin himself traveled to Pennsylvania to brew his 
Schwartz Tint as a black ink stout at Evergreen Brewing Company. By the way, sacks of grain from his own cultivation were exported to America because without them there would be no Schwartz Tint. Malt and roasted in a, in a huge smoker to, the full of to his fullest satisfaction. The 46 year old served to brew beer incidentally. It was a crazy idea, I was actually a very impatient person, but I stayed tuned to this. He brewed his first beer in a saucepan at home. Undrinkable, too much foam, torn bottles. The first attempt went wrong, but soon I got the hang of it, says the self-proclaimed Barrowplexic. He got help from friends of his brewery, and he basically acquired his knowledge himself by reading a lot of especially literature and browsing the internet. He began, he's been running his, running the Dietrichinger microbrewery in Moose Bach for almost 20 years. He's been cooperating with the Tolzer, uh, Muslim fell bra for one year. The grain for his beers grew in St. Peter's at his parents' farm. After the harvest, he roasted himself, a complex process. And it says it's a craft beer from A to Z because even the barley is grown and harvested by the brewery on his own farm. Any chemicals, and then Braxton says, note Martin Sedile, not even manure, comes on his fields, are left out of his farm and on the ingredients for his beer. Instead, so-called catch crops are sown and plowed in for natural fertilizer. Uh, pretty well the same thing I said read before. It says, this stout is the perfect beer to accompany desserts. Hmm. So there you go. So It's a bock, yet it's a stout. So, for my glass for this brew, a glass which they call a stout glass, it's not the stout, like I'm used, for a stout glass I'd be used to something, you know, that you see in the Guinness, but. I do like a Guinness, however, that's one of the few stouts that I've had that I can actually say I really enjoyed. And it definitely looks like a stout. Not a lot of head so far. doesn't smell strong like a stout. It smells like a typical lager, like a light lager. Normally with stouts, you know, you'll get a hint of coffee, uh, maybe smoky type of thing, chocolate even. And right now comes the taste. Definitely looks like ink too, by the way. Um, it tastes like a stout. Not a bad stout either, actually. I've, this is probably one of the better stouts that I've done reviews on so far. It's a pretty easy drinking stout, actually. A lot of like, it doesn't have the head that you get with a Irish stout, a Guinness type of thing. Um, Six point three, so increased alcohol content. Um, a lot of stouts, the mouth feel it's kind of like a creamy, thick. Not getting that here. If, if this was in a ceramic glass and I couldn't see the color and it were a dark brew, I wouldn't think this was a stout as such. I would go, to far, go as far to say this to me, um, compared to a traditional stout, and when I say traditional stout I'm thinking of the Irish stouts, the Guinness stouts, um, I would say this is almost like a light stout. Not a bad thing at all. Um, actually, I'm really enjoying that more than I thought I would. As soon as I uh, stout, like I said, I like a Guinness, but that's about the only good stout I've had. There's another one which from Yellow Belly, St. John's Stout, which I want to try. Story behind that, but I won't get into it right now. So, so for the Schwartz Tint, the Collab Stout, or the Dark Bach, as they call it, you give it a rating. 
think I'm comfortable giving this one a 3.5. So that's between good and very good beer. For if you're not a fan of stouts or you're afraid to try one, I mean, don't be afraid of the dark. This would be a good one to start off with. So there you go, folks, for the black ink. I'm comfortable giving this one a 3.5. So hopefully you can join me tomorrow night. We'll uh, knock, knock one more off the box as we get closer to the end. So there you go, folks. Until next year, as always, enjoy responsibly. Cheers.